I'm Sebastian St. James. There's a brand new Australian index to this channel that beats the entire Australian market. Oh, here it is. Well, it's the, I don't know, I'm having problems reading that, versus the ASX 200 total return over 10.1 years, and presumably it wins because it's in blue. Oh, it's obfuscated. Well, that's not very helpful. You've been told two things about stocks that are actually a lie, and I'm here to expose the truth. Lie number one, no one can beat the stock market. Okay, lie number two, if a fund does, then reversion to the mean causes that fund to underperform in the future. To be fair, most of those statements are true, but there is a proven strategy that actually does make those statements false. It's called factor investing. Oh, that's interesting. What's that about? There are several factors that have been statistically proven to beat the market. This is Stephen A. Ross. In 1976, he found that security returns are best explained by multiple factors. Right, so that's what we're talking about today. This is Rolf Batz. Boy, that's an attractive photo. Yeah, we just caught him at exactly the right moment. In 1981, he found small stocks outperform large stocks over time. Mm, interesting. So that's our first factor. This is Farmer and French. In 1993, they demonstrated that value stocks outperform growth stocks. Interesting. So we went from one factor to three factors, then up to five factors, and the factors keep growing and growing. So what's the bottom line here about factors? Well, the bottom line is there are several factors such as size, value, momentum, and profitability that have been statistically shown to outperform the total market over the long term. Is this obscured graph that you showed me using one of these factors? Yes, it is. Oh, here's a new graph. This is value versus the ASX 200 total return over one year. So what do we have here? In blue, we have the S&P ASX 200 Enhanced Value Total Return. Okay, so that's a total return index. In red, we have the ASX 200 Total Return. Red is the entire share market, and blue is specifically value stocks. What's enhanced value? And is it one of these factors? Well, the value factor is low price to book, right? Well, what's book value? Book value is the expected value that a company could get if they were to sell all their assets. Book value is something that's calculated by an accountant. It's a hypothetical value, but it's the best guess of what the company's worth if you liquidated the whole thing. If the book value was $10, the current price is $5. Oh, so I'm paying $5 to get $10 worth of value. Yes, that's exactly what you're doing. This is BHP. Well, let's look. It's price to book, P to B, it's 3.66. Is that good? No, because the market overall has an average of 1.48. In other words, it's rather expensive on that particular scale. The second thing to look at is price to earnings. You know what earnings are. How much am I paying to get $1 worth of earnings? Back to PHP. Its price to earnings is 9.04. The market overall is 15.63. Okay, so it's actually good value based on that particular metric. And the last one is price to sales. How much am I paying to get $1 worth of sales in this particular company? Its price to sales is 2.53 and the market overall is 1.86. In other words, it's a little bit expensive. So the ASX 200 Enhanced Value Index is designed to measure the performance of the top 40 stocks. All right, that tells you how many they've chosen in the ASX 200 with attractive valuations based on their value score calculated using three fundamental measures. And they're the ones we discussed before. Over the one year, value has returned minus 3.23%. Oh, the entire stock market has returned minus 0.0889%. That's a lot of decimal places. This number I find highly amusing. My software is actually designed, I know because I wrote it myself, to round numbers off to three significant places. Zero is not significant, so if it starts with a zero, well, it then pushes right down. So we still get our three decimal places at 0 0.889. I notice this is the ASX total return, not total return plus franking credits. I demand franking credits. I demand franking credits. Well, settle down, I know you do, but Standard & Poor's doesn't, 
I know, it's odd. So the indices that we'll be showing today outside of the entire market actually do come with total return, which means they include dividends. Well, that's good, but they don't include franking credits. Now, it doesn't matter because I actually track the market in several different ways with franking credits without franking credits, but with dividends, so total return, and I track with none of those. So it doesn't really matter as long as I'm comparing like with like, we could do the comparison. This is value versus the ASX total return over 10.1 years. Oh, so that's all our data. Let me zoom in there. Well, I would say red has won. Who is red? Oh, it's the total return of the stock market and value is actually lost. Is that right? Well, let's see over 10.1 years, but value has returned 108%. The entire stock market has returned 115%. Yes, so value has lost. Oh, but you promised that you'd give me an index that beat the market. And this one hasn't beaten the market. What is going on, Mr. Sebastian? So you've discovered one very important thing. Factor investing, the factors can actually underperform for large periods of time, like a decade or so at a time but it does not mean that over the long term, they don't actually beat the stock market because statistically they do. Value stocks versus growth stocks. Although growth stocks is not a factor, in fact, it's an anti-factor because the claim is that value stocks actually beat growth stocks. So we need to understand growth stocks because they're the other half of the investment universe. So here it is. This is growth stocks versus the ASX 200 total return. Both of them are total returns. And it comes from the S&P ASX 200 Growth Index. We measure growth stocks using three factors. Sales growth, the ratio of earnings change to price, and momentum. We'll discuss momentum in a moment. Constituents are drawn from the S&P ASX 200. Because, according to rating agencies, stocks could all be divided into growth or value. Let's plot both on the same graph and see how they go. So, growth versus value versus the ASX total return over one year, and who wins? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'm going to have to zoom in to find out. Whoa, that's close. I think orange has won and orange is the total return. Blue is down the bottom, so growth came last. Is that correct? Let's take a look. The total market returned basically zero. Value returned minus 0.323 and growth stocks. Oh, yes, minus 1.68. Over one year, growth was a dud. Over three years, red is in the lead. Who's red? Oh, value stocks. Okay, they've clearly outperformed the market. There you go, it can happen. And blue, which is growth stock, is down the bottom. The market's in the middle, right. Over the period, growth returned 39.6%, value 62.3%, and the whole market returned 55. Well, that's pretty good, but apparently not as good as value. Over five years, well, oh, I think they've changed positions. Blue is in the lead. Who is blue? Blue, it's growth stocks. Right, then orange, which is entire market, and red, well, that's value. That's now down the bottom. The switch places, this is gripping. Over the period, growth stocks have returned 58.2% value, 34.1, that's quite a difference. The market overall, 51.9. Hmm, interesting. Over 10.1 years, which is entire data set, Blue is up the top and blue is growth. Aha, so growth outperforms, oh, I don't know, they're sort of smooshed together. Oh, the stock market is second. And then red, which is value, is down the bottom just. So over 10.1 years, growth has returned 140%, value 108%, and the whole market 115%, edging out value, but look how well growth has done. Very good. So growth has won overall. Is that the obfuscated graph that you showed me at the beginning of the video? No, but this is. Here is momentum. Oh, this is new. Versus the ASX 200 total return over one year. Interesting. So red, which is the entire stock market, and momentum is blue, and that's down the bottom. Oh, so it's actually underperformed. So what is momentum? Well, it's the S&P ASX 200 momentum, and it's designed to measure the top performance of the top 40 stocks, that's 40 stocks again, in the S&P ASX 200 universe that exhibit persistence in their relative performance. Momentum returned minus 6.13%. The whole stock market returned, well, basically zero. Over two years, ooh, zoom in, zoom in again. Blue, okay, who's blue? Well, momentum has just eked out the entire stock market, including dividends. Momentum returned 16.6%, the stock market overall 16. Oh, that is close, look at that. So what is meant by momentum? And exactly how do I calculate this? Using this formula, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Oh, another formula, Sebastian.
Behind me, Satan. Not today. Not with your formulas. Explain it to me like I'm five. Like you're specifically five. Hmm. This is going to take a bit of work. This is Tim, and Tim has a Tonka toy truck. Oh, lovely. Soon, it's Tim's birthday, and Dad has promised him a brand new truck. And here are the trucks that Tim can choose from. Um, I'm sure they're all very impressive. Although Tim is five, he's actually a budding truck collector, and he wants the truck that is going to be worth the most when he retires. Seriously, who is this kid? Because Tim plans to fund his retirement by selling off his Tonka trucks. Yes, of course he does. He's five. As Tim has not yet watched enough of my videos, he's unable to predict the future. Oh, what a shame. So he uses the increase in the price of the Tonka trucks over the last 12 months to work out the price momentum. Truck momentum is calculated by the price today divided by the price this time last year. You're not five. You don't know that five-year-olds aren't using division to figure out which birthday present they want. The price of the truck today is $20. This time last year it was $10. Okay, so 20 divided by 10 is in fact two. Truck number two has a ratio of 1.5 and truck number three has a ratio of one. So clearly truck one is better, yes. So there it is, it's that straightforward. Unfortunately, after watching this video, your five-year-old is going to demand much more expensive presents, but that's the price you pay for progress. So Momentum simply gives the best stocks that have gone up the most in the last 12 months, but there is a problem with this that I can see. Oh, it's called reversion to the mean. Oh, okay. Reversion to the mean basically says that if something goes up, it's more likely to come down again because it tends to revert to the mean. Is this true? Yes, this is true sometimes. If reversion to the mean was strictly true, then Momentum, which is based on buying stocks which have gone up in price, actually wouldn't be a factor. And therefore, statistically, we know that reversion to the mean is not always true over the long period of time because momentum is a factor and it does work. The second thing that speaks against mean reversion is market cap weighting. This is BHP. Its price keeps going up. It becomes the largest stock on the ASX. And by definition, if it's reversion to the mean as the price goes up, then it should hit a bubble and then sort of come back down again. But that's not what happens. Companies that grow over time tend to grow more. So those which are big get bigger. So reversion to the mean does not tend to work when it comes to market capitalization. That doesn't mean that mean reversion cannot work a lot of the time, but on average, it's beaten out by momentum. Here is momentum versus the total stock market over three years. And blue has won, blue is momentum. Okay, so it's beating the stock market, very good. Over three years, Momentum has returned 60.8%, the entire stock market 55%. Oh, good for you, Momentum. Over five years, Blue has won. Well, we know already that Blue is Momentum, only just though. Hmm, what are the actual figures? Well, Momentum's returned 56.5%, the total stock market 51.9%. Okay, but still, 5% more, I'll take that. Over 10.1 years, which is our entire data set. Oh, Blue has clearly won. Look at that. So momentum is in the lead. So here it is. This is the obfuscated graph, now de-obfuscated, that I showed you at the very beginning of the video. Momentum has returned 188%. Oh, look at that. Lovely. And the entire stock market, 115%. Well, that is very impressive. Here is Rob. Rob is my new channel member who joined zero days ago. Oh, he's just joined. How exciting. The problem is that Rob is triggered. Take a look. Thanks for the great content. As the share price drops when its dividend remains constant or even up, is there a way to calculate the buy trigger? See? Triggered. Except that is the wrong Rob. That's right. I have multiple people who are viewers of my channel on a regular basis who are using the exact username R-O-B. I kid you not. But I have a solution. As Rob has now become my brand new channel member, effective immediately, all other Robs will have to immediately change their usernames because there can only be one true Rob. So if you want to get all the perks on this channel that Rob is getting right now, and you want to reserve your name so that you can be the one true you, hit the join button below this video. Momentum beating the ASX 200 over the entire decade is very impressive, but there is one natural question. How confident are you, Sebastian, that Momentum is actually going to beat the market over the long term? Well, this is it. Momentum is a factor from Factor Investing that has been demonstrated to beat the market over the long term. If this index implements Factor Investing correctly, 
This is the S&P Momentum Index, and I have no reason to believe they haven't implemented it correctly. There's a reasonable expectation it could beat the market over the long term. Okay. Of course, there's no guarantees in life, but factors have been statistically proven to work. So factors statistically improve your chance of beating the market considerably, but there's no guarantees. Do you know, I have a tool that allows me to beat the stock market. Oh, I'm very interested in that. Click here to find out what that tool is, or if you've seen that, click here.